Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And good morning. Welcome to another edition of the Northland Sports Page. It's Brian Prudhomme. It's Dave Cook. Wow, I feel like I've been on these airwaves a lot recently. Not Kinda one, not two, but three prep hockey games of the week this week. But right now we're back to our normal comfort zone talking sports for the next two hours. Well, if and if everything goes chalk this week, Brian, when you and I are on the uh, on the air, we're going to be here a little longer than normal. It's been overtime after overtime after overtime. This I was going to say, as far as I know, they don't allow that with the talk show format. I no. don't think we'll be here till 1230. I got senior day at the Rife at one, so if we are, I'm in big trouble. Yeah, and I'm at Mars at two. I don't have to be there until one. You're going to be talking about achievements at that time. I am. We've talked about senior days before, how we feel about them, how we necessarily don't feel about them. I'll tell you what, though, paying homage to seniors that dedicate time, no problem with that. Sometimes how it's done, we don't love. Yeah, because, we sh- because it stars us and it shouldn't. We should probably have some kind of... Uh, parameters that we give people for senior days right so we can I give a lot name. of insight as to how it should go yeah high school and colleges should be different for start with you know colleges should be you're graduating what your degree is in do you have a job yet um you know i think gpa is a is a dangerous one um give me your games give me your point total and let's cheer the fact that you were here i'll tell you what if gpa is listed i'm glad i wasn't in an athletic program as a senior because i just would have put look i graduated well, leave it alone and that's the point i think in high school if you want to get a little more touchy feely i mean you and i both chuckle sometimes about when parents get involved and it's like oh my gosh i so remember when you were 5 and you did this and it's like i am well and that's that's my number one pet peeve and i was talking to you about it on the way here today and again It sounds like we're get off my lawn guys immediately and don't get us wrong. We are proud of all of the seniors, high school, college that have dedicated the time to the sport and honoring them is a big deal. Just the way in which it's done sometimes is comical because again, you get a lot of quotes from parents or coaches and quotes are written in first person, but then it's the public address announcer going, I, 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 and sometimes it's, I have no idea what's being talked about here. Have you ever been surprised when you were reading something uh, and you kind of hesitated for a second? When uh, I was doing Marshall Senior Day and Dakota was going into the electricians, I thought somebody was pranking me. Really? Yep, because that was the first time I had read a Duluth Marshall kid going to become an electrician, and he's doing a great job. But uh, but I got to, I got to that point, and I was like, they know what I do. Are they playing with me here? I'm just going to keep reading. (laughs) You know what it is about senior day, though? It's one of those things that I don't love leading up to it because I know how special it is to other people and the onus is on us to, you know, make this go. But every time you're done with it, I think you kind of feel like, gosh, I'm glad I did that because everybody's so appreciative of the whole thing. Oh, I agree with that. But here's another another suggestion. If you are a parent or a coach and you are planning a senior day, the public address announcer wants the information before 15 minutes before the game starts. Yes. You just took the words right out of my yeah. mouth because it's happened to me. And one of our sponsors is Mount Royal Bottle Shop. One of the head honchos there is Bob Gustafson. Bob does a ton of hockey PA for the Mirage and for the Hawks of Hermantown. And I think he's got a senior day today, too, for the Hermantown boys. And as of yesterday afternoon, he said, guess how much information I have yeah. at the moment. Yeah, it's an in, almost an inside joke. Well, it's not almost. It is an inside joke. It was until public, we just took to the air with it. Public address guys, we get we get that information. I've had it, and I'm sure you have, during warm-ups. Somebody taps you on the shoulder and says, excuse me, do you have a second to talk about senior right. day today? And I say, sure, what is it? And they say about three minutes. Yep, yep. As soon as we're done with, with warm-ups before the Zamboni comes out, we're going to do senior day. It's like, yeah, well, warm-ups are done in two and a half minutes. What right. are we doing here? But again, for some of those seniors, it is kind of their Super Bowl. And oh, by the way, today is the eve of the actual Super Bowl. And I guess as Minnesota sports fans, we should make a bigger deal out of Senior Day than the Super Bowl because at least you and I get to have a dog in the fight on Senior Day, right? We've done them before. We look forward to doing them, right? We haven't done a Super Bowl since I was a kid. Absolutely. And for me, never. I was born after January of 1977, March of 79 for me. So I have not had my favorite team in the Super Bowl ever. That's so fascinating that we've that the state has had exactly two championships in your life on the men's side. Don't yeah, forget the links the and their plethora. Correct. Correct. And professional men's. Right. right. 
Speaking of plethora, we've got a bunch of sponsors. We've got great ones. Absolutely. And as always, in the morning when we start, we talk about Aurora Architecture Studio because they're the ones that kept the lights on when nobody else was uh, in a situation where they could help. And uh, so if you are looking for architectural services, we do ask that the first phone call is to Arola Architecture Studio. Hoops Brewing, OAR Holdings, Kraus Heating and Cooling, your carrier HVAC authorized dealer, Advantage Emblem and Screen Printing, Sammy's Pizza, the Blackwoods Group, including their locations on London Road, in Proctor and in Two Harbors, Blackwater Downtown and Tavern on the Hill, on the Hill, Mount Royal Bottle Shop, Stewart Spike Sports and Trophies, Kohler Toyota and Kohler Hyundai, Comfort Systems, Mike Regan, at Christensen Group Insurance. And I'm just going to add one here real quick. Okay. okay. Um, with the water main break, I want to give a hat tip to the city workers who came out. You've had an interesting morning. Minutes. You didn't come to the yes. studio with floaties on, but you could have. No, it, uh, they were the city crews were out there within a half hour. Our neighbor has a water main break, and, of course, it's flooding our house again. And um, um, just the fact that they were able... That was and, said with such resignation. Of course, we've got a moat outside well, again. They, they're starting to call those kind of problems our house number. <laughs> um, but they, they were able to drop whatever they were doing. They were out there in 30 minutes, and thank you very much. That is outstanding. Now, you said something interesting at the start of the sponsorship list, and I agree with you. You talked about the OG, your old architecture studio. He brings you drawing lines each and every week. That'll close the show again today. But you mentioned, you know, if you've got architectural needs, we do ask that the first phone call be to a Roller Architecture Studio. You know what we got to get from Ryan? How about the phone number to make that phone call? We should probably oh, add it good. to the plugs that we do for him. Yeah. I, in fact, we could add them to most of these. Right. So. Although we get teased about what? You talk about overtime. Is it part of the talk show or not? A lot of our listeners have said you guys could use an extra hour just to keep plugging your sponsors. We'd do it, yeah. but it'd be an interesting aired show, if you will. We'd have to micro-machine man the email. Yes, like those commercials that were right in front of us. Yeah, where they hit super speed at the last couple minutes. We're talking about this. this, this. I don't know if yeah. we'll leave this. And it's usually about APR financing. It's Cars are known for it. Meanwhile, our car sponsors, they're just going to give you a free TV. I like that. Yeah, you know what? I And I was telling Dana last week about your take on this whole TV. Thing, yeah, right. Which makes me laugh. I'm begging, yes. Yep. <laughs> which makes me laugh. Not above and, it, and I'll and, admit it. And if you don't need one... Think about those people that don't drive. Yeah, that think of those one. non-drivers that would love a free 65-inch TV. Yep, yep, that makes Sounds okay to me. Be a great one to have this weekend. Watch the Super Bowl 65-inch so, TV. I was told a long time ago that this is the week that places like Best Buy, last week and the week before, their profits are up, right? Because they're selling TVs, great guns. But the sneaky ones of us, we buy the T, and that's, I've never done this, so I say we is kind of a tongue-in-cheek. Right. Um, buy those TVs and then watch Super Bowl on them. And then return those TVs? Carefully package them back oh, in, slide them no. back in a box and return them. Well, the real so, Slim Shady, please stand up. That's Shady. Yeah, it, no no doubt it is, but they all kind of roll their eyes and expect it. Like, okay, well, the clearance TVs will be right. great by next weekend. See, I think of it the other way because I think of all the food and beverage sponsors that we have. And I think, you know, we'll talk to Dave Hoops at 1030. What is Hoops going to look like come Sunday? Sammy's, if you're hosting... Or even just watching alone. Tell me you're not getting a pizza for the Super Bowl. You know, you talk about all the different places that we go to eat. Blackwoods Tavern. You can bring it home. You can go there and watch. I'd be doing probably all of that Super Bowl Sunday. That's that's almost more important to me than the game. But again, because my favorite team has never been in it. I think it's why it's a national thing and not just another sports event. Is that everybody thinks that way. We're going to go out and celebrate Super Bowl Sunday. And, you know, half the people are there for the commercials. And the other half are there for the game. And... Now, this year, there'll be a third half there for Taylor Swift. Wow. and uh, That's 150% of it, your viewing audience. It, well, we've and added. And if anybody wants the halftime show, you've got you've got maybe two different Super Bowls going on. T- Taylor Swift has added football fans that weren't football fans. Still probably aren't, but because she's related to it. So you do have to add that next 50% because right. they, they weren't involved in the first place. I challenge people not to talk much about her simply to save the argument. Because I said this last week, the people that are just up in arms that she's ruining football, you're wrong. But the people that have made it their sole purpose to defend the fact that she can be there, you're right, but you shouldn't have to continue the conversation. Well, think about this. In football, football feels pretty— And we're being hypocritical because we're going to go ahead and talk about it right now. Well, well, I'm not, bang, I'm not getting on You're not banging Taylor the Swift. gavel? Right. I'm not, I'm not being negative about Taylor Swift at all. I'm going to kind of take a shot at, at football fans here. Um, we're comfortable with where our sport is, right? We, it's the biggest thing going on in the, in the country. It draws the biggest audiences. It's all, I mean, so we don't really need that extra spotlight, 
But think about it if you were an NHL fan and Taylor Swift was dating uh, Connor McDavid. Right. Right. And how many more eyes would be on professional hockey? I was going to say, NHL think if you're a league that, that needs the help. Right. Right. And so I, I just, I think that the fact that Taylor Swift is engaged and her fans are now engaged is cool. We need Taylor Swift to be about 10 years younger and start dating a Duluth Huskies player and save the Wade. Right. <laughs> That would be awesome, right? But okay, wouldn't it sell out all the time? Yep, I'd be back in the crow's nest in well, a heartbeat. We'd, we'd invite that person in here all the time. Oh, look, Taylor's here with you. Hey, Taylor. Yeah, that that person. We'd be yeah. like, oh, you're dating someone on the team. Come in here, let's yep, chat. Exactly right. Be like how wise the general manager of the Harbor Monsters was, get, bringing his coach in and letting his coach talk. Well, this person who's dating uh, Ms. Swift could bring uh, them in and just sit in that corner and let Ms. Swift have. We'd talk about him the whole time, but with her. Right, right. It would just be a resourceful way to use the conversation. Mr. Kelsey, thank you very much for coming, but can we talk to your date? We could turn everything into our radio Super Bowl, certainly. As, again, it's Super Bowl Eve, but again, as Vikings fans, we have no clue what any of that means. So what we're going to do today is talk about what types of games, sports by sport, and even level by level, have we decided to turn into our proverbial Super Bowl because the Minnesota Vikings, since 1977, have never been there. And that's part of the reason we're doing this. But the other part I said to you this week, Dave, I said, you know, we use this cliche a lot in sports. When it's a marquee matchup, but means a little bit more to one team than another, how many times have we looked at each other and said, well, that's Team X's Super Bowl? Yeah. Well, it's not literally true, but we're going to take advantage of the figurative topic. Yeah, and let's uh, let's just start with uh, the University of Minnesota football team and Iowa. Okay. Like the Gophers are like, all right, we're going to go get Iowa or we're going to go get Wisconsin. It could be either of those two teams. Well, and that's the thing because you just said what I was going to because you said let's start with the Gophers and Iowa. And I said to you when we were talking about doing this topic, I said, you know, down in the metro and people that went to the University of Minnesota or go will probably say it's Iowa because we've been almost trained Pavlov dog style to say it is up here. Dude, it's the Badgers. Come on. Yep. yep. And the the thing about a Super Bowl for one team, it's usually not for the other. And so 100%. Like with Wisconsin football, for instance, and, and the Gophers, it's like the Gophers are, I mean, PJ Fleck was hired. And the, to first, beat Wisconsin. the first thing he said is I was hired to do two things, beat Wisconsin and beat Iowa. And the people in Wisconsin were like, oh, that's right. We play you once a year. Right. Right. And so it's um, it's interesting when it's like that. The, the Gophers Super Bowl is Wisconsin and the Axe. If, but if they have the Axe, it's not. And now that they have a Floyd of Rosedale for the first time. I was going to say, it's an indictment on the Gophers when Floyd their Super Rose. Bowl is Wisconsin or Iowa. Wisconsin Super Bowl is probably Ohio State. I'm not sure whose Iowa Super Bowl is. Maybe it's us because it's not a fair catch. It's still a thing. Yeah, that's a good question, Brian. Who would Iowa be? It might. I don't think it's us though, because they beat it us Nebraska? like a rented. Drum. Is it? Is it? Who's got better corn? Is it Iowa and Nebraska? No, Nebraska's been bad too. Is it Iowa State? Do right. they play Iowa State? Probably, every year? but do they play annually? I'm not sure. It's probably got. Doesn't it have to be Michigan or or somebody like that? Because I mean, at least there's a team that, and that would be the annual trip to who sees to represent the Big Ten in the whatever college bowl game. Because Iowa always seems to stumble out of this stumble bum Western, right? And plays Michigan. And thank goodness those Ohio divisions State. are gone now. Yes, let's agreed. let's not worry about that. What we're worried about is the Big Ten has twenty teams. That that's going to be a little yes, different it in its own right. But you mentioned Wisconsin football, kind of chuckling at Minnesota. I think that spills to the NFL as well. Because let's be honest, it's a Packer game that's our Super Bowl. The Packers will tell you that's the Bears, right? The- 100%. But why? Why is it still the Bears? I get the history. That's why. But the Bears haven't been good in forever. Right, but it's Aaron Rodgers throws a little bit on it when he comes out and says, I own Chicago, right? It's those little bits between those two teams that make it such a rivalry. Um, and and it probably is the Bears' rival as much as is the, the Packers' rival for exactly that reason because the Bears have been owned by Aaron Rodgers forever. Well, and the only thing the Packers have done for the rest of the division is provided some cohesiveness because – Bears, Vikings, still kind of a big deal. Lions, Vikings, still kind of a big deal. Lions, Bears, I guess I'm not sure. But you talk to any of the other three teams about beating Green Bay, oh, yeah, we're going to do that. Yeah, 100%. Uh, and that's the thing. The, the Vikings have regional rivals, but I don't know if any of our regional rivals consider the Vikings the biggest rival. Right. So it's almost like a little kid who's ready to get in a fight, but nobody wants to fight with him. Is that salt on the wound? Because we already talked about how shucks, we're Minnesota, our teams don't win. 
is it worse because our quote unquote rivals don't seem to care if we win or not? Yeah. Or in the case of the wild, and we'll get back to them in a second, it's Winnipeg. You're right. You know, um, so, but the Vikings, the Vikings see Minnesota sees Wisconsin as the big rival, except maybe in college hockey where it's the reverse where Wisconsin sees Minnesota as the rival, and Minnesota probably sees North Dakota as the rival. I agree with that. I also think that every other school in Minnesota sees Minnesota as the rival. I know the conference rivalry is gone, but I feel like, and maybe I'm just a little bit too old in professing this, but I feel like St. Cloud, Mankato, Duluth, all see the Gophers yeah. as still public you, enemy number one. If you can put the Gopher pelt on the wall, you've won for the year. I, right. I agree with that. Hang the banner, we beat the Gophers. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But I think Wisconsin's hockey team, it's Minnesota. But, Brian, that might be it. Or it could be, like, I I uh, busted a guy who was, uh, when I was at um, Spherion, who had a had an email or a resume, and on it he said he played for the University of Wisconsin baseball team. Well, I know the University of Wisconsin baseball team doesn't have uh, a rival because they don't have a baseball team. Right. And so... So, wait a minute. Did yes. he George O'Leary this resume? Yeah, 100%. And some people get that reference and some people won't. Yeah. 100% all the way through it. And when I started calling him was, on stuff... Was he also born on February 30th? Did you check the, his DOB? The the line, nobody actually reads these things anyway, so who cares? I'm like, dude, I just read it. Like, so you're, you're wrong. But anyways, the... Wisconsin's rivalry with Minnesota seems to be college hockey. And Minnesota's rivalry with Wisconsin seems to be like everybody else. I'm still curious about this resume. Did you look at the guy and go, yeah, I played football at UWS in 2002 and see what he said? No, I just shook my head. It was it, I caught him on that. And then we started talking about, I don't believe anything else on the resume. And So what year really did he defensive. put down? Because I made the football UWS reference and, and there were times where you could have said that. So this would have been 2002. Something. Okay, so it was a legit lie. Oh, it was a legit lie. Wow. And it's not the worst one I've ever read, but I don't want to talk to you about that. You gonna, know that one. I was going to say, I know we're doing, yes, I do. I know we're doing sports radio, but the HR guys and us during the day just kind of crept in and went, really? The Here's here's just a, an idea for everybody who's listening. If you're going to have somebody you know read your resume, don't lie through the whole thing. Like I have... We're not talking about it on the air because that person we both know. Yes. Um, but like, it's not close. It's like you're reading it. It's like, is this, are you writing a novel? Cause this has nothing to do with you. Well, and just to close this topic, because we have to be vague and protective about it. I'm still shocked that it was someone we know, knowing they were turning it into someone they know. Yep. How, yep. how do you lie almost when somebody's like grown joke. up with you? Yes. Yep. Almost like they were you making You talked about, you know, Dakota's electrician aspirations. You thought you were being punked. How about when that happened? Yeah, right. That was anyways, back to back to the Super Bowl of things. Well, you said you wanted to go to the Minnesota Wild, so let's do that. Yep. Isn't, Who's become their Super Bowl? Isn't the Wild Super Bowl Winnipeg now? No. It I'll isn't. say no. I think geographically it could be, and locally it could be, because everybody that played for Hermantown or East seems to be a Winnipeg Jet. But isn't it either Dallas or Chicago? Whether uh, it should be, you could debate. I don't think it's Chicago. Could it I be, think it's still Dallas. Or is it Colorado? If we were better, it would be because yeah. Colorado's continuously good. Dallas because of the hate factor. Right. That's, that's still not gone. A, I'm yep. not sure why that isn't gone yet. I mean, I get why For it started. Like Topher. But there's a there's a generation now of fans that have no clue who the Minnesota North Stars were. Yeah, that's absolutely So why true. isn't that hatred I th- fading? I think for most of those Norm people, Green still sucks, no doubt. But why is that hatred not gone? I think that the other the other thing that the Winnipeg rivalry had was Bufflin and Bufflin just owned the wild. And so many people now don't but know Dallas who that has is Suter. Yeah, but I think we don't like Suter. That's I think we envied Bufflin. Okay. Like I think we were like, oh, we so want you to play for well, us. So who would you rather have a rivalry with? Someone you admire or someone you hate? I think that answer is easy. I don't know if it is. I think envy, it's not admire. I think if if you if you have envy you're you're there as well. PJ Fleck was not hired because of anger. He was hired because of envy. True. And so I but think Wisconsin was a rival because we envied that they beat us all the time. Well, that's and they poached all of our best players. And oh, they do that in I, basketball. Well, they do that in football. They did it in football before PJ got here as well. No, it's it's such an interesting thing. And, and you know, we talk about it specifically in like high school, the East Cloquet hockey rivalry for all those years. Right. Were, were, was that, you know, it was the Super Bowl for one team or another, whichever one the better team was. We talked about Denfeld East right. being the Super Bowl. Well, and that's 
That's really Marshall where this. Hermantown. Well, that's really where this topic stems from. I don't want to make it about high school rivalries because you tiptoe a slippery slope of taking a shot at somebody. But the Super Bowl phrase probably starts there. Yeah, Denfeld plays East in anything. It's their Super Bowl. Proctor Hermantown. Hermantown yeah. Marshall hockey back in the day. Yep. The um, the hammer game is such an interesting game because it is just that. It means so much. Um, but the one team expects to win and the other team is swinging say, like a kid It's the, in the Super fight. Bowl for the team that hasn't won it a lot. Yep. You made a point about the team expected to win doesn't look at it as the Super Bowl. They have nothing to gain. They have to defend and be as good as they supposedly are. But but Proctor, when they that's their focus, right? And someday right. when when um, Kriv finishes that build and they start and they start being e- equal or even better, you know, these days the, that rivalry is going to be stuck in these days when it was when it was tough to win. And now that we're better than you, we're going to show it, right? That's Absolutely. how it's going to be. All right. So NBA, the Timberwolves are good this year, decent the last couple of years, decent during the KG era. Horrible for several stretches before and in between the KG era and now. Who in the world becomes the Minnesota Timberwolves Super Bowl? Well, let's start it from the other direction first. Who is who sees Minnesota as that? Nobody. Nobody. Right? All right. So we up got- until this year, even though they made the playoffs twice consecutive the last two seasons, Minnesota historically borders on the laughing stock of the league. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about teams that are forgotten and what if they disappeared? We've done that. If you do that nationally, the Timberwolves come up. Oh, 100%. 100%. We've talked about which team would nobody miss. And we've said nationally it's probably the right. Wolves. You and I, it wouldn't be. But no. um, Is it the Lakers? And is it the Lakers only because we want it to be the Lakers? Um, it used to be the Celtics. Is that because we really wanted it to be the Celtics? But I think those are the two teams that Minnesota fans follow, the Lakers or the Celtics. Maybe I didn't go that deep because I look at those two teams as the cream of the crop in NBA history. And I don't put Minnesota anywhere near that. I went with whoever Jimmy Butler was playing because it's That's my great, because That's it's my the, Super Bowl. Well, but I think it's a lot of people's because it's Miami. Now it was Philly before what have you. Maybe it's Denver. We've tried to kind of invent a rivalry with them. I'm not sure that I buy it, but it, it kind of feels like that. OKC is that right now. It's it's going to become that. I'm, I'm super curious if the league will allow that to become a budding rivalry because I was just thinking about this the other day that the top two, although right now I think Denver just surpassed OKC, but the top two for most of this week was OKC in Minnesota. And I'm picturing a Western Conference Finals with Kenny the Jet Smith and Charles Barkley and that crew having to ping pong between being in Minneapolis and Oklahoma city and them going, what is this? We're, we're, <laughs> we're so used to being LA Phoenix this time of year. What are we doing in Minneapolis and Oklahoma city? Are you sure the league is going to allow these two teams to be as good as it appears they are? Well, I hate the phrase sports is rigged. It bugs me to no end, but I feel like with those two teams, we're going to find out. Yeah. That you might be a hundred percent, right? You might be a hundred percent, right? I just, I just think that, this topic is so focused on the team that wants um, to beat the other team. Right. That the team that says this is our Super Bowl, ask the other team, and they go, right. really? So it's so it's Vikings, Packers, Twins, Yankees. It's um, Is it Twins, Yankees? For the mini, I think for Minneapolis. Still, is, you think it is? I do. Uh, I think it's Twins, White Sox. But it's, See, I, I think, do too. I think that um, casual fans who get ramped up, it's for the Yankees. I agree, but the reason I hesitate is because don't you want your Super Bowl something that you think you have a chance to win? I feel like against the Yankees, we just kind of go fetal position and go, well, get this series over with. We'll start winning again. But when we win, it's yeah, like, it's puff your chest out. Yeah, Can you believe what all, we just did? Every, you know, we've got uh, we've got uh, the two general managers down at home plate, stamping on home plate right. too when we beat the Yankees. And if you're the Yankees, you're going, oh, the Twins. Yeah, that was our playoff bye for 15 years. Yes, that's exactly. But that's what makes it a Super Bowl for the Twins, right? Um, but as, as we were saying, so it's, it's almost easier to look at it that way. Minnesota, it's Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota college sports, it's Wisconsin, except hockey when it's the reverse, uh, twins baseball. I think it's the Yankees. It's probably the white Sox, um, the Timberwolves, the, the Vikings, it's probably the Timberwolves need to find one. Once they do, they've made it. They've become a good team. Now, if they find one 
that becomes their Super Bowl or God forbid values them enough to view them as a Super Bowl, then they've made it. So I can tell you kind of the difference as I see it. So Scholastica Hockey uh, had two when they were in the uh, other league that we were in. The top two teams. The NCAA? Were Saint, yes. Were St. Norbert's and Adrian. Okay. St. Norbert's was by far the better team, right? But Scholastica played the same kind of game. So it was a really good back and forth. You know, they might be the number one ranked team in the country, but it would be a split over the years. You know, five years, it would be a 500 record. Right. Right. We couldn't beat Adrian to save our lives because they played goon hockey and we were set up more to play like Norbert's. Um, and so the Super Bowl for Scholastica kind of became Adrian, right? This was the much better team in, in Norbert's and, and we played really well and the games were more fun, but doggone it. We can beat these guys. Right. Meanwhile, for basketball and football, it was always Northwestern. Not the yes. Wildcats Northwestern. The Eagles of Northwestern for Scholastica back in those days. Yep, baseball too. Almost every other sport. Right. All right, so we've got about two, three minutes to close this topic. I want to pose this topic a different way. Yeah. In these final couple minutes, give me one game for each of the big four that made you feel like when we won it, we won the Super Bowl. Because we know that we haven't. The Twins should be easy because they've actually won a title. Two of them, in fact. But what's a game where you celebrated like, we won everything, even though we didn't? Yeah, it's Gomez's uh, score in game 163 for the Twins. It is, 100%. Even Um, though it should be 87 or 91 because nobody can argue we actually were the champions. But that feeling of, holy cow, they just did what they did was game 163. Because they were me, no business being in that race. For me, for the Timberwolves, it is uh, Taj's three from the corner against Denver. Uh, okay. To get into the Look playoffs. at you finally remembering that it was Taj Gibson. You don't know how you hard all, I worked You on always that. say, Bulls forward guy, yeah, who was it? Didn't you see the smoke? I was yeah. working it. So for me, it's Kevin Garnett almost single-handedly beating Sacramento in game seven. I almost said Kevin loved three to beat the whoever the Clippers beat. Yeah. at the buzzer. The reason I couldn't name the other team is why I didn't because it didn't mean anything one, to them, right? or it was a West Coast game, so you fell asleep. <laughs> well, that could be as well. Now that I listen to basketball, it's kind of a, I wish the NBA played all year long so I'd sleep better. But the and I don't mean it's boring. I mean it's consistent. Right. The um the uh, gosh the wild. See, I have two, and they're both against the same team. Actually, I have three, and they're all against the same team. It's either brunette. Ending Patrick Waugh's career. Oh. Or the other game winning goal, I believe that Danny Heatley helped set up for Nino against Colorado. Or the Bobby Orr style goal by Granlin earlier that series against Colorado. See, I don't remember that one. It's it's the Bruno goal because that's the one that everybody remembers, right? I mean, I think the Nino goal is important. The Spurgeon goal before that's important. Right. Right. But I think it's the brunette one because that was when we finally said we've arrived. What's the Viking game for you? Man, it depends on how recent you want to get. I mean, recent, it's the Buffalo game, right? Probably. Um, but, you know, I, I look at the Minneapolis Miracle and it was cool, but instead of celebrating like we won something, what's the first thing I said to you? If this is the Vikings, they'll lose next week and what they do. Yeah, exactly. For As a kid, it was the mud bowl between the Vikings and the Rams where everybody was caked in mud, and but it was in Minneapolis, so it was like, huh, you can't come and play in our field. Right. You can't play this game. So for me as a college kid going to Winona State initially, it was border town just like this is in Duluth. And so I watched that Monday night Randy Moss coming out party enveloped in Packer fans, and I got to go, are you guys having fun yet or what? <laughs> right. The, the other game uh, that really felt like a Super Bowl is the – uh, Anthony Carter game. Sam France. No, against New oh. Orleans. The, oh, yeah. The week before. The because, 41 to 10 or whatever over yep. Bobby Bear and company. But a team that we weren't expected to be in right. their class. Right. And that's when you thought, huh, I wonder if we got something here. Because Anthony Carter just, I mean, we forget how good Anthony Carter was, yeah. right? He single handedly. We don't, just, but overall, I think people do. He dismantled both those two teams in that playoff series. Right. We talk about that 87 team in its run. That was Anthony Carter in his run. Yeah, 100%. Apologies but, to everybody else on those teams. It was Anthony Carter in his run. But Anthony Carter in that first game against New Orleans set the set the tone with the punt return and did all the stuff. And yeah, that was that's the one I remember. So was this fun or was this depressing or was this an indictment on Minnesota sports that we had to invent our own big games? Because it, when, when it comes to the proverbial big game, you've seen it at least. I know nothing. 
because apparently I'm two years too young to know. Yeah, well, you'd have had to have a couple extra years. You wouldn't have remembered if it was the same year. Right. You know, North it, Dakota needs a professional sport, doggone it. You know what it did? It gave us radio banter. Yeah. God bless them. Sports talk knows no bounds, especially here in Minnesota. We're going to talk to Dave Hoops next. A tribute to the late, great Toby Keith. Courtesy of the red, white, and blue, does it get more American than the Super Bowl? No, it does not. This is Americana at its best. Does it get more American than a good beer? Dave Hoops has several of them. We'll talk about those as well. Stick around. We will be right back. Hey, guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. I love it too, especially when you're talking about Hoops Brewing. Hoops Brewing is one of our illustrious sponsors. Dave Cook is going to tell you about all of them right now. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Let's start with OAR Holdings, Kraus Heating and Cooling, your carrier HVAC authorized dealer, Advantage Emblem and Screen Printing, Sammy's Pizza, the Blackwoods Group, including their locations, Tavern on the Hill, Blackwater right downtown, their locations in Two Harbors and in Proctor, and of course, the original at uh, London Road and 26th, right? Yeah, we're pretty frequent 20, visitors there. We are. I don't remember which which the You're street right. is. You're All right. right. Mount Royal Bottle Shop, Stewart Spike Sports and Trophies, Kohler Toyota and Kohler Hyundai, where you can get a larger TV. And if you are not interested in the TV, but you know somebody who doesn't drive, you should give them well, a Well, let me put the main stipulation out there. You do have to buy a vehicle you first. You can't just go to Kohler and grab a TV. Right, because you'd return it at the end of the weekend. Right. Um, Comfort Systems and Mike Regan at Christensen Group Insurance. And, of course, Aurora Architecture Studio and our next guest, and I'll let him do his own read. Absolutely. Hoops Brewing, Mr. Dave Hoops is with us. And I'll tell you what, we continued our tribute to the late Toby Keith. And, Dave Cook, you and I commented that Toby Keith wrote songs that if Hoops Brewing had a soundtrack, it feels like Toby Keith pretty much wrote it for them. A hundred percent. And we were just talking about how it's he seems so darn young. You know, it didn't seem like Toby Keith was around forever. And uh, having passed away was kind of a big deal. Absolutely, but a lot of his music was about good beer, a good bar, and Dave Hoops, you're a proprietor of both. Good morning, sir. Uh, Good morning, guys. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Doing okay on Super Bowl Eve. I'm not sure if you heard the first segment or not, but we had to basically ad lib. What are our Super Bowls here in Minnesota? Because, again, anybody born after January of 1977 has no clue what the Vikings being in a Super Bowl is like. (laughs) Well, again, we go back to a couple of years back when they should have been at home in the Super Bowl, but right. I digress. Well, you did talk about, you know, the big game happens, whether or not our favorite team is in it or not. And you and I were discussing during the break that big watch party tomorrow. Tell us more about what you'll be doing and what folks can do at the brewery, of course. Well, um, as always, if you wear a jersey, you get a free beer. And that's any jersey, really, especially since it's Super Bowl Sunday. Um, we will have the game on and I don't know, 12 or 13 TVs, good sound. Um, it should be a, a, a nice night. Um, and, um, we hope to get a lot of people in. I'll be, I'll be watching with, a, a, another group last year. I was the host this year. Part of those people have to host, so I don't have to, which is good. That is nice. So are you a Super Bowl party goer? It sounds like, yes, some people are, some people aren't. I would say one thing that makes it easier to go and do those parties is the fact that my favorite team is not in it, because if they were, Topher Davis would say I'd be watching alone in a padded room. I wouldn't want to party with anybody. Does having no big dog in the fight make it easier for you to party, or do you party anyway? Well, I don't really party per se, but I do make an effort to uh, typically host in my garage. and so. But that's just a close, small group. This time, it's, it's another garage. Um, but I do really enjoy the game. Um, I don't really care so much about halftime or ads, but um, I like this matchup a lot because it's a it's a fun matchup. Both teams are attractive. Um, we have a rematch. What was it, 2019? Chiefs, was that their first one? I'm not sure. I know they won. Yeah, um, they did beat and, uh, yeah, Jimmy so, G-led 49ers team. But yeah, I, so I agree I, with I the matchup. I think fun. this is tremendous. I think you've got probably the best – I'll call it position player, as in non-quarterback in CMC. You've got the best quarterback in Mahomes. You probably have the two best tight ends. It's yeah. a good matchup. 
No, it's it's a good what what I see is is you have the best team, and I'll I'll rinse my mouth out here in just a second. But it the is the Niners; they're the best team. If uh, Vikings fans wonder what it's supposed to look like, this is what you do with a rookie quarterback that you don't have to pay anything to. You build the rest of the roster up. Um, when you have well, a quarterback, well, it doesn't hurt takes, to hit on Mister Irrelevant either. That's not uh, exactly hundred of. hundred percent. But when you have your quarterback taking up all the roster, then you get Mister Irrelevant starting at center, right? Right. right. Um, so, but or corner as the case may be right the um so definitely the best team in the in the league is in the super bowl the problem is is the team they're playing who shouldn't be there because they have aaron Rodgers' disease with their corner with their wide receivers right nobody um but they have the they have the best tight end in the league but that quarterback mahomes makes magic you know he makes lemonade out of all these lemons he and does they're in the super bowl again it's interesting because Different football fans have different theories that they, you know, die on the proverbial sword. And in this Super Bowl, both would be right because somebody would say, well, you need an elite quarterback to get anywhere in this league. And Kansas City's proving that, that if you have the most elite quarterback, you can go anywhere you want to. Yep. And other people will say, no, you need a good quarterback and you need enough to build around him. And San Francisco wrote the book on that for everybody. Absolutely. That San Francisco team is so good. Like, I don't like them at all. So the fact that I'm saying that they're so good means that I don't know when the last time we saw a team this put together, right? I think San Francisco is that good, but nobody would be shocked if they don't win this because Patrick Mahomes, all he keeps doing is winning games that nobody thinks his team is going to. And with that, I'm going to segue back to you, Dave Hoops, because you reserve the right to make your Super Bowl prediction this week rather than last. Who are you going with here on the eve of the big game? Well, you guys touched on a few things. Now, I, I don't know if the tired storyline of the last player picked or is Taylor going to dance for us. I'm sick of both. I, I don't dislike either one of these, these storylines, but enough. Brock Purdy's a quarterback. Yep. He's playing on a team. He has skills, some skills. Um, you know, but uh, I found an interesting stat. Mahomes hits the ground uh, less than 4% of the time. He, he he takes a sack. It's the lowest number in football. So can, does he have anybody to throw to? No, he actually has a terrible completion percentage because nobody can hang on to the ball, right? But your point about him not being beatable is valid. Almost 800% winning percentage. Okay, It's insane. But, yeah. But, you know, it, it's going to be a really good game. Um, I watched the Niners win four Super Bowls in San Francisco proper um, did not adapt them as my team as I have the Vikings, but I never disliked them. And they had so many legends that were fun to watch. And the city is classy. They party like they've won before, much like Barry Sanders when they win a touch of uh, Super Bowl. So I'm, I'm picking the, the Niners um, wholeheartedly, but it's going to be a three point game. Um, it's going to go the over, I believe, even though, their defense is their past defense is the best, but really KC is about defense now, and we're not talking about that. We're talking about Mahomes all the time, right? Well, and you're right. I feel like so, we should be because Vincey Glenn brought that up too. Where if you look at how Kansas City's really gotten this done, yes, Mahomes is unbelievable, but especially in the Baltimore game, Kansas City's defense has been the difference maker. And you're right; they are probably incorrectly the most overlooked aspect of this football game. Yeah, hundred percent. Although I do think you know we're going to have sixty plus points scored. And, um, and I, I'm usually wrong. So you guys might want to pick against me, but I'm, I'm wholeheartedly. And I like McCaffrey for MVP. It'd be nice to see a non quarterback win it. And I'd like to see him go, let's say one twenty on the ground and multiple catches, maybe two touchdowns. I think that would be deserved for the MVP. All right. So I'm going to go with this. I prefer that the 49ers win this game, not for any particular major reason, because again, I said last week, I like them both. This isn't going to be a Super Bowl where I'm going to go, gosh, I can't believe they won. I'm not going to feel that way no matter who wins. But I feel like the more balanced team should. And San Francisco is the more balanced team. So I hope that they win. But here's the thing. I'm going to go with Kansas City to win, and here's why. San Francisco's playoff run has been characterized by really, really poor starts. They got behind against Green Bay, came back and won. They were buried against Detroit until Dan Campbell, Dan Campbell. If you start slow against Andy Reid, Mahomes, and company, you're done. You better play four quarters instead of two and a half. Yeah, the 
The thing is, is I think only one team can blow out, and I think that San Francisco can blow out Kansas City because if they don't start fast, Kansas City doesn't have the the horses to be able to come back. I mean, if you can't catch the football, your tight end can't win a game by himself. Right. Um, or can he because they've won several. Yeah, but he. I mean, let's say your tight end goes for 160, but the rest of your your – Wide receivers yeah. are dropping. It's like the, the ball NBA game where you let the shooting yeah. guard get forty and everybody else gets five. So I think San Francisco can wreck Kansas City, but I think if it's close, I mean we've talked about this before. You give Mahomes a, a quarterback, you give him the football, and you're within three points. Right, he's scoring. What if it is one of those games again, just like last year, Mahomes versus Hurts? Who's going to have the ball last? Who's going to finish this? Yep. Then I go with then I go with Kansas City. I think Kansas City wins it close because of Mahomes. I think San Francisco wins, and I think it'll be by 14 points. All right, so it's been some fun questions as to who will win this game and why. Fun questions, that's what Dave Cook does. Go ahead, sir. All right, so guys, on on, uh, Thursday we did uh, Duluth Denfeld and Duluth Marshall, but the Junior Varsity game had an interesting moment, and that is when the music guy at uh, Heritage started playing another bop, and, and Landon Wheeler, my new favorite player, went all disco on it, and and on the ice, as the goaltender for Marshall's JV, started dancing. I would like to know, um, throughout your time, which player in whatever sport had the most unusual, I don't know, I'm going to say tick, but that's not the right word, the most unusual habits, like Landon and his whole in-goalie dancing routine when a good song is on. Wow. This is tough. This is one of those, I'm glad I out to the guest first, and Dave Hoops, you get to kick it off. Well, that, that's really, really tough. Um, you know, I, I don't know that this is unusual, but everybody dances now. There's this uh, pro tennis player, woman tennis player, yeah, that's all over the call. internet dance, and she's, yeah, she's great. But um, And obviously Kelsey and everything else. But really, um, I mentioned Sanders. That's not unusual. That's the best tick after a score. Period. Actually, just giving it to the but, official. Yeah, that's a tremendous idea. Yeah, hundred percent. But um, you know, I mentioned um, I've mentioned Dion in this show before, but I was lucky enough to have a partial season ticket package for the Giants, my NL team, back when I lived there, and he danced uh, as a baseball player on the field, and that wasn't popular then. And he got slagged for it. You guys might remember. I don't know if it was on Sports Center, but he did it you know, just in passing, he'd do a shuffle if he, you know, stuff like that. And that was kind of pre on the baseball field doing. So that's my, my vote for the most unusual. You don't see a lot of baseball players dancing, at least back then. I was going to say, not a lot of choreography on the diamond these days. Maybe that'll come because every game seems to be evolving. I think for me, I will go to baseball because you said tick and I'm not sure this should be, you know, made fun of, but I enjoyed it because he was one of my favorite players on our team, the Minnesota twins. But Joe Nathan and all of his many ticks before he would deliver the ball, basically, you know, went through all these deep breaths, what have you, and, and almost sounded like a horse before he would deliver the ball because he'd do that and then he'd yep. get rid of it. But I, I enjoyed it. And then Ocho Cinco, Chad Johnson, whatever he did when he scored, you never knew what it was going to be. I don't know if that was a tick or a dance or yes, but I was never a Chad Johnson fan, but I wanted him to get in the end zone because what was going to happen? Yeah, him and Terrell, right? Um, I, so I'm going to be a little bit older here. Uh, I think it's the bird. I think it's Mark Fidrich, Fidrich yeah. when he when he took the ball and he'd have a conversation the icy with glare it first. After that, yep, he'd he'd have the conversation about what it was he wanted the ball to do and then throw it. And if it worked, it was happy. And if it didn't work, yeah, he'd get it back and yell at it. And, right. Yeah. No, I think Bert. I think the other one, um, guys, is what happened when Bo Jackson was embarrassed on a strike three. He usually a broken bat over his knee. He the bat <laughs> yeah. over his knee or his head. And so those always made me laugh. And the last one is Joey Batista home run. Oh, Joey bat Bats. Flips. Yeah, yep. absolutely. So. I think some of the goofy ones are basketball, but then you find out why and they're not. Because Doug Christie used to randomly point to the sky just throughout the game, and it was a signal to his kids. Jeff Hornacek was wiping his face everywhere at the free throw line. He was talking to his kids. When you knew that, it made different amounts of sense. Yeah, no, I agree. There's always a reason. And like I said, I try to find Landon Wheeler different music each time for him to it dance It doesn't matter. You give funny. him a song, he's dancing, he's lip syncing. Yep. The game was over more and he was still singing, I'm still standing. I loved yep, it. More power to him. That was good. All right, question number two. Now, do we want to do sports or non-sports? Because I've got, I, I'm going to go non-sports. I'll let Hoops make the call. Okay, all you right, did. Go Dave, ahead. Dave, you've been uh, out and about traveling and all that. Um, I have a quick question for you. Continental breakfasts. What's the best food on a continental breakfast? 
Uh, none. Let's just thank just you. I was going to say, there. can I just say they aren't good? But you did. Go ahead. Yeah, but you know, and that that's a little bit too cynical. But I'm not a fan. Um, you know, some if if that's the case, I'm going to have like a half a piece of toast and a little bit of scrambled eggs. But really, what I care about in the continental breakfast is do they have black tea? Yes. So I'm not a good person for this. I'm just going to like I'm going with the. I'm not a fan. I'm the same way. If there's a continental breakfast, it just means I'm probably going out for breakfast if I can, or I'm skipping it because I'll tell you what, you know, the traditional trip that I take for the twins home opener, we always go to embassy suites, partly because you can see it in the right field corner when you're at target field. So proximity is nice, but there's also the omelet bar. I'm going there versus any kind of continental breakfast at any time. Yeah. The continental breakfast is for me, like Dave, it's black tea. And, and then I always grab a yogurt, right? Right. So it's well, and, and your diet is so limited anyway. Yes. There should be continental breakfast and Dave Cook breakfast, different categories. All right. So one more. I, we, have, we have time for one more, and that's that's the hockey all-star game. Everybody seems like the three-on-three uh, component of the all-star game. Guys, is hockey a better sport three-on-three? No, but, boy, that's a great question. Um, at first, I hated it, and now I really like it. And um, everybody's all oohing and on because they bring the puck back over the line and everything else but no i don't think so but it's exciting and it's much more exciting than than a, a shootout so i'm going to give it a, a it's a 60 percent better sport but it's not 90 how's that for i agree uh, because i'm going to say overall no it's not but i'll tell you what in overtime i wish it was at every level because not just because my voice is feeling the effects of three games this week and two that went into overtime and one that didn't have a goal in it but john carlson i was quote unquote makes this mistake and says, do we go three on three now? No, John, it's prep hockey. Well, he's kind of pushing for it. And I agree with him. If we went three on three in high school, it'd be awesome. Yeah. As long as it's eight minutes long, we're good. Right. Get the clock right. We wouldn't need much of the eight minutes if we go three on three, I assume, because there's a lot of good top lines out there too. Absolutely true, Brian. Absolutely true. And I think, I think hockey is a five on five sport, but the more I watch three on three, the more I'm starting it to is enjoyable. maybe we move that. And I mentioned top lines. The best line Super Bowl Sunday is how about a beer? Hoops Brewing is the place to go get one. Dave, again, tell them what they can expect. Well, thank you, first of all, for allowing me to do this every week. I love it. Oh, it's awesome. And, uh, yeah, great beers, great beers. We just put champagne IPA on yesterday, which is something that nobody else makes. And it's your, you know, super light see-through IPA with good, crisp, fun, flavorful, floral, fruity flavors. I'm going a lot of too apps. far there. Sorry. Yep, yep. Um, raspberry wheat for you, Brian. Um, yep. Our very first cherry stout. We just have about uh, 1,100 pounds of cherries being delivered, uh, and um, we'll be putting that out. And then a brand new batch of Keller Pills. And huge news, the Ripple Bar is changing hands end of this month. New ownership, um, addition of a food component. It's a big deal, which will be nice down there. Absolutely. And then again, tomorrow for the big game, wear a jersey, free beer. Is that correct? At least one? Yep. Hundred percent. You bring, you wear a jersey, you get a free beer, and you can root for whoever you'd like. We don't have a horse in the game. All right, Dave Hoops. We appreciate you each and every Saturday. We will do it again next week, my friend. Great. Thanks, guys. Have a really good Super Bowl. Enjoy, Thanks, Dave. You as well. That's our guy, Dave Hoops of Hoops Brewing. More Toby Keith. Red Solo Cup. Fill it up with Hoops Brewing. We'll be right back. Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Talking about our next guest makes me smile as well. More Toby Keith. I want to talk about me. I don't. I want to talk about our next guest in a big way because this week was a very important week. I know there was a specific day, but in, in different events I was at throughout the week, it was basically celebrated all week. And it revolves around women's sports and women in sports specifically. The actual title of said day is National Girls and Women in Sports Day. It was Wednesday this week. We happen to know a ton of great females in sports. We're going to talk to one of them shortly. Yeah, we really are. Somebody that's that's uh, got a professional, a profession that she is, uh, you know, really accepted in and is growing and crawling up the ladder like any other person who is in the industry and really respected. Well, and you talked earlier about Hawkeyes and their fans. We're going to deal with one, too. Can you handle it as a gopher guy? Well, like I said, 
if it's a rivalry for us, sometimes it's not a rivalry for them. Absolutely. Maybe we should ask her about the fair catch because it doesn't seem to die, at least in Iowa. And maybe in Minnesota, it doesn't either because Gopher football had to celebrate something this season. Something. Yeah, we got one. We got one. Absolutely. But we're going to celebrate Chelsea Brown, formerly of WDIO. She's moved on. She's everywhere. Good morning. And tell us what you're up to these days. Oh, good morning. I can't believe you're already bringing up the fair catch. I don't think Uh, that will ever die for Hawkeye fans. I don't know if they will ever get over it. Um, But, yeah, I've been on the road lately. I'm headed on the road again, uh, headed to Lincoln, Nebraska later today because uh, there's a superstar on the Iowa women's basketball team who is very close to breaking a pretty big time record. Well, and she's breaking just about every record just in terms of notoriety because you can come home on a Saturday night and turn on national TV and women's college basketball is there. The game has grown exponentially. She might be the biggest reason why. Talk a little bit about what it's like to cover Caitlin Clark because you tweeted a glimpse into what happens as she leaves the court. Everybody's talking about Taylor Swift right now. It's close in terms of attention people want to get from her. Yes. I mean, they've been referred to the Iowa women's basketball team as the Beatles. It's a reference that you could get when they were just at their peak stardom. And then Taylor Swift, a lot of the girls are fans of her. And they really do draw in crowds uh, like you would not believe. And I think the biggest testament is when they're on the road and they can draw in, you know, thousands of fans to road arenas. I got the chance to travel even with the team when they made their run to the national championship game last year. And I mean, we were traveling to places like Seattle and Dallas. It's not close to Iowa at all. (laughs) And I was talking with fans in Seattle who were down from Canada because they wanted to see Caitlin Clark and they wanted to see the team. And then Dallas too. I mean, that place was filled with black and gold when they were down there. So it I don't know how they handle it, to be honest, this team, especially Caitlin, um, but they handle it so well. They're so mature about it, and that's why so many people want to continuously come out and see them because they are so generous with their time. Always, always, always after the game, they are signing autographs for the fans that come out. The fanfare is awesome. What about what's it like to actually watch her play? Because you've seen a lot of great athletes, male, female, doesn't matter. But you look at Caitlin Clark and it's, you know, Steph Curry type range. Anything in the building is within her distance to shoot the basketball. You know, we can talk about, wow, she's like one of the Beatles, but let's not forget she's a hell of a basketball player too. What's it like to just watch what she can do? I mean, you mentioned the from the logo. That is her signature. I think that a lot of fans watching her love it when she makes those deep threes and everything. But even this week, she wasn't the leading point scorer. I know, imagine that. Right. But... She broke a record in assist, you know, or an arena record at Carver Hawkeye Arena where Iowa plays. Like, she is just so well-rounded and so balanced. She sees the floor so, so, so well, which is so important in her position as a point guard. And it's just been so fun to see her mature and grow. I mean, she's averaging over 32 points a game, which is just insanity. That's her average, you know what I mean? But I just think what she's doing is just, It's on another level, and I think what works so well is that her teammates understand her strengths, and her teammates understand what she can do on the floor, but they also are trying to make sure that they're in positions to make something like her breaking an assist record happen. You know what I mean? It's just so fluid. It's such beautiful basketball to watch. So, Chelsea, quick question then. So, Mm -hmm. women's basketball seems to have been, it seems to be growing exponentially right now. Is women's basketball growth pulling Caitlin along or is Caitlin pulling women's basketball awareness, uh, especially college um, along, which is, which is the chicken and which is the egg? That's a great question. Personally, having known the teams in Iowa, uh, specifically at the college level, um, women's basketball has always been fantastic in the state of Iowa. Um, I mean, even going down the road to Iowa State and up north, uh, northern Iowa, just the crowd that they bring in and the level that they play at has always been incredible. But I think Galen Clark is really truly pulling it on more of a global and country-esque um, just because of who she is. You know, she's right. a great human being and she's a great role model. I do want to add that, too. 
Um, but obviously, um, the way that she plays the game, a lot of people just like to watch her. They like to see her personality on the court, and that's what she tries to embrace too and just kind of show off. But I think it's she is helping pull this, and she said a couple weeks ago that she thinks that uh, women's college basketball is in a really good place right now. I would certainly agree with that. We are talking to Chelsea Brown, formerly of WDIO, but proof that she doesn't forget us when she's even more famous as she joins us today. Talk to us a little bit about what a day is like for you now. We knew a little bit more about it when we saw you everywhere and on our TVs here in the Northland, but is it just following Caitlin Clark around or is there more to it? Talk about what you're doing <laughs> now as a, as a member of sports media. Yes, it seems like it right now. Uh, that <laughs> Nothing that is wrong with the that. Focus. Yeah, yeah, just because she is so close to this record of the all-time, being the all-time uh, college women's basketball leading scorer, I mean, 39 points. So we have a tracker right now, and we're kind of just tracking her, and we'll be on the road with them uh, as they kind of finish out the regular season and beyond. Um, so it seems like that's the only thing I'm doing now, but no, 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 no. We still, we still have high school sports going on. I was at the Iowa men's wrestling just last night. We got state wrestling coming up. So, I mean, it's just, you kind of have your hand in everything, but this right now is such a focus because she is so close. And because this team is so fun to watch our viewers up here in uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, They want to know more about the team. They want to continuously follow the team with us. So that's why it's just been a big focal point. It is pretty insane how much everybody wants to know. We should almost put a poll out there. Who are you following more, Caitlin Clark or Taylor Swift? I think I know who (laughs) would win, but our followers are very sports-oriented. It might be closer. It'd probably be closer than you think. Um, Now, granted, nationwide, it's probably heavily leaning one way. What nickname do we need for Caitlin Clark followers? Because the Clarkies doesn't have the same ring as Swifties does. Candy bar fan. Caitlin's being shortened to Katie's doesn't work. I like the Beatles, but that's the whole group. Chelsea Brown, what do you got for Swifties turned Caitlin Clark followers? Oh my gosh, that's so hard. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Clarkies. It doesn't follow. No, it, I mean, it actually sounds really bad, to be honest. But Yeah, yeah, CC, like she's known as CC. I, I, maybe something with 22, you know. But that could be yeah. a Taylor Swift tie-in, too. She's not the only I one know. feeling 22. There you go. Exactly. There's too many references, but she has her fans. We do need to come up with a name for them. We do. Speaking of having fans, you do too. Talk a little bit more about National Girls and Women in Sports Day and what it means to you because you've come so far in this industry and you've been a role model for Alicia Tipke, Claudia Shikamian, and the likes up here. Of course, Claudia gone now too. Who were your role models getting into this business? Oh, there are too many to name. I mean, I'm we got about five minutes. Of- See what you can do. <laughs> I, I would say I, they see your name, but I'm a big fan of the Calm Down podcast. That's with uh, Aaron Andrews, Carissa Thompson. I listen to them on a weekly basis. They're pretty big names, obviously, in the football world and everything. But it's fun that you bring up even Alicia and Claudia because, I mean, those are my girls. They're still my girls. We have a group chat. And I think that's just what's so special um, about women in sports is, like, you can kind of just go up to someone, even at a game, and just introduce yourself. And more than likely, you have so much more in common than you think. And I think that's just what's incredible is that you meet so many great women and so many lifelong friends. Like you said, Body is down in Alabama doing her thing. Alicia is still in Minnesota doing her thing. But we talk, if not on a daily basis, definitely multiple times a week, which is just amazing. And the support for women is just incredible when you can find them. So, I mean, there are so many great women and it's, you get to meet them too, uh, you know, as you travel and you get to meet you know, some of your idols. Holly Rowe, I am still yeah, terrified. That's a good one. You're go terrified? Her. I have never gone up to her. I have always just, like, looked at her from a distance. I mean, she's been in Iowa City so many times now, and she was obviously following the women's tournament. And just, I am too chicken just to say hi to her because she is just, she's phenomenal at what she does, and she's such a wonderful human being for those of my friends who have met her. I'm just, I, I don't know. I just let them do their job, you know? <laughs> and I'm just like, you are fantastic, and I love to watch you. Well, I do have one last question for you. You get to close it. All right, very good. So we've had, <laughs> we've talked about, you know, where you're at, how far women in sports have come. What's next? Where do you need to go from here? What's your career plan? What do you think about the whole 
women in and girls in sports, what's what's next? For me, I'm just going to keep doing what I do. Um, I loved the Duluth area, and I loved my time uh, covering those teams up there. I'm loving it down here in Iowa. It's not for me. I don't think about what's next, but as far as women in sports, like we got to keep this going. I think about the Iowa women's wrestling team who was in their inaugural season, and I just want to see more of them. I want to talk to more of them, and I want to see something like the women's game and basketball continuously grow. So we got to keep it up, and we just got to keep pushing forward and make sure that uh, women have a voice and they have a platform in sports. Very good. They definitely do. We're bumping out with more Toby Keith. It's How Do You Like Me Now? I'll tell you what, as it pertains to you, we love you. But tell all the fans in Iowa, they're right. It wasn't a fair catch because it was an illegal signal. It was the right call. We're sorry. (laughs) We'll appreciate that. (laughs) We had to win something. You know how much we struggle in Minnesota, don't you? You were here long enough. (laughs) Yes, I get it. I get it. All right. Well, you enjoy everything. We enjoyed you. Let's talk again soon. Please. All right, that's Chelsea Brown. She's off to Lincoln. Wherever Caitlin Clark goes, she goes. That's not a tough assignment. Yeah, no, but it's easy job description, that's for sure. What are you doing this week? I don't know. Where's Caitlin? Yeah, that sounds fun to me. It was a fun segment. When we come back, we go to another national champion. He's done it before. He did it again. Chris Plies from the curling world. Good curling to you. Stick around. We'll be right back. This podcast is sponsored by Ramp. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's business cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp for free. Just go to ramp.com slash easy. Ramp.com slash easy. R-A-M-P dot com slash easy. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply.